portrait relighting has many potential applications. For example, in video conferencing, simply replacing the background often leads to unnatural results. After relighting, videos can look more natural when blended with the background. We can also rotate the environment map, like shown here. Previous works mostly rely on light stages to collect paired training data, which is extremely expensive and time-consuming. In this work, we propose training a relighting network using a synthetic dataset. We show that our network not only achieves preferable results compared to methods trained on light stage data, but also enables new features such as controlling the glares on eyeglasses. To demonstrate the effectiveness of our method, we also build a simple interface for users to easily apply our relighting network. Given an image, we first estimate its normal and albedo maps. The user can drag and drop an environment map to get corresponding relit outputs. The user can also rotate the environment map to get different results. Next, we show side-by-side -side comparisons to state-of-the-art relighting methods. Note how our method produces plausible glares on the eyeglasses, generates fewer artifacts, especially around the forehead and the hair regions, and synthesizes outputs with more consistent lighting to the target environment map. Compared with total relighting, our method better preserves the facial details keeps the clothing color, and maintains the hair color more faithfully. Moreover, thanks to our synthetic data set, we are able to control the intensities of the glares on eyeglasses. We can also rotate the environment map to reproduce the reflection effect on the lenses. In addition, when we apply our temporal refining networks, we can generate more temporarily stable relit outputs compared to existing video relighting methods. Note how their results flicker from time to time, while ours remain stable. To train our network, we render a large-scale synthetic dataset tailored for portrait relighting. We then bridge the domain gap and increase the output realism by using a novel synthetic-to-real domain adaptation technique. For our dataset, the rendering pipeline works as follows. We first randomly select an identity and apparels to form a unique combination. We then randomize the colors and camera poses for rendering. Finally, we pair the combination with a random HDR map to render the final output. We can then change the HDR map to get a pair of images under different lightings. Here are some examples of our rendered images where we only change one attribute at a time. Here we show more examples of the same person under different lightings. Our entire training pipeline can be divided into three stages. In the first stage, we train on our synthetic dataset. The network first estimates normal and albedo maps. Different from prior work, we estimate two kinds of normals, one with lenses and one without lenses. They are then used to generate light maps, which are then combined with the albedo to get an initial rendering. Our rendering net then only synthesizes the details to be added to this coarse rendering. This allows us to better preserve details in the input image. In the second stage, we apply synthetic to real to increase the output realism. We observe that the domain map mainly comes from the albedo map, so we add a network to refine the albedo while keeping everything else fixed. To prevent the output from violating the lighting physics, we add novel losses to ensure lighting consistency by relighting the input using OLAT maps. This also enables us to generate better OLAT videos like shown here. Finally, in the last stage, we extend to videos and modify the network to ensure temporal consistency. We add two networks to refine the albedo and normal maps conditioned on previous estimations to make sure they are consistent with prior frames. After the refinement, we are able to synthesize much smoother videos like shown here. Thank you for watching.